Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program from our studios in Jerusalem. My name is Martin Blackham and I'm with my wife Natalie Blackham and with a program that brings you news, we bring you what's happening behind the news and we <clears throat> also bring you teaching from a Hebraic perspective. Now, <clears throat> we've been talking on the program about the uh, New World Order, One World Government. We've been talking about what, what <clears throat> the control of the global elites and what it has to do with Israel, because Israel is the key, Israel is the centre. We've talked about uh, the book of Daniel, where there is a, a one world ruler and a one world government. We've, we've, we've mentioned all these things to build up to this point and we're watching what's happening in Jerusalem. Now, the first thing you need to know is that there are smoke screens, there are diversions that are done by the mainstream media, or some people call it the MSM, and uh, the governments are doing uh, smoke screens to distract us from what's really going on. And uh, one of the things is, is the control of journalism, the control of the narrative. Uh, it's almost impossible to read uh, the mainstream media and not uh, think that there's a different world going on to the one that we're seeing. Um, and also, uh, we have in Israel, very sadly, uh, COVID is meant to be back. Well, uh, I didn't. I thought it had gone, and now it's suddenly back. So, this is mm. very strange. So, what the injection didn't work? No, mm. not only did the experimental jab not work because they're saying to people to have boosters, so it doesn't work. But not only did it not work. But it's also very strange that it's popped up its ugly head again. Where has it been? Did it go on holiday during the summer holidays? The thing is, folks, uh, very seriously, um, they are sending distractions to us so we don't see what they're doing. Uh, it's the magician's trick. Having said that, we do need to examine the different things that are happening uh, to see where things are, and if they're not, if they're just the magician's trick, we just ignore them. Now, uh, the real things that are going on is the control of society, the 15-minute city. Uh, we've been talking about the control of money, the reduction of cash so that they can have a digital money, the control of people through smart cities, through smart devices, um, the control of health and uh, they are reducing the population. So the first thing I want to have a look at is masks. And just a quick, a quick interlude just before I get onto that is that uh, we have had some issues with the banking. So uh, for those of you who are supporting us, if you haven't received a acknowledgement, that's because uh, we've had some issues seeing who's donating what and when. So please uh, bear with us while we get through this time together. Uh, hopefully it should clear itself up, but um, if you haven't received anything, uh, we will be in touch with you. And by the way, we are very grateful to everybody who's supporting us. And if you'd like to support us, then please get in touch with us uh, on our website, on our email, and uh, there's a messaging system on the website and you can also donate on the website. Well, Ynet News, which is um, one of the mainstream media news in Israel, says wear masks. That's their headline. Covid rears its ugly head in Israel as cases allegedly rise. Israeli Health Ministry recommends patients with symptoms to keep in quarantine. So here we are again, uh, the whole of our lives being disrupted for f at least five days. I don't know what they think people are going to do for five days if they're going to take time off work and to wear a face mask when going out. Researchers have, however, found that face masks are far from harmless. Public health intervention for COVID, in addition to the psychosocial harm caused by daily mask wearing, particularly to small children, there is new scientific research that lists a ho host of health issues that can arise from prolonged mask wearing. An international team of scientists publishing in the journal Frontiers of Public Health found that face mask wearing can cause significant health problems. The research is published a meta-analysis of studies on adverse 
um, mask effects, the largest of its kind. They found a statistically significant decline in oxygen intake. Oxygen is very, very important and it's something you need more of, not less of. An increase in carbon dioxide, increased heart rate, increase in shortness of breath, dizziness and skin irritation. Mask wearing was associated with a 62% increase in headaches. Plus all the psychological effects on the people. This yeah. is just like biologically. Now, uh, the, so you might say, well, there's some bad health effects, but maybe we have to do it to protect grandma and granddad. No, a major study published by the Animals of Internal Medicine found no statistical significant difference in COVID cases between mask wearers and non-mask wearers. There have been extensive random controlled trial studies, meta-analysis reviews of RT, RCT studies which all show that masks do not work to prevent respiratory illnesses like uh, flu, like, influen like influenza and those transmitted viruses. The most common sense argument is that the COVID virus is between 0. Now this is where the, we get into science. The COVID virus is between 0. 0.06 to 0. 0.14 microns in diameter according to scientists whilst the pores on the best masks cannot filter out particles smaller than 0.3 microns. So in other words, it can't stop viruses from spreading. So it doesn't do anything to help other people and it's just yeah. the danger to yourself. And, and I will say something else, so Martin, is that like the COVID is not a virus, it's a bioweapon. Again, you can do your own research on that and usually is with the G5, is frequencies, and they are controlling that. They are sending it to different places. And so it's, it's all control. It's, do your own research and uh, find out. We, we can't speak about all of it uh, today, but it's like it's a bioweapon. And it's interesting, Natalie, because... It's not a virus. And it's, in, it's interesting because um, the flu disappeared completely. Yes. Uh, where did that go? Did that go on holiday as well? You know, it, it no. doesn't make any sense no. when you look at it logically. And um, how is it that they're able to say people have this uh, illness? How is it that they're able to do that? The plain fact of the matter is they're only able to do it with the PCR test, which we've talked about on previous programs. But if you miss that or miss that uh, um, news stories on the PCR, the PCR test basically amplifies some uh, cycles. It's something that takes uh, the sample and it amplifies it to to find out if there's an alleged infection mm -hmm. now. It's it, a big joke again. It, it, it amplifies, 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 and basically the PCR test can find anything. Yes. So yeah. um, they are, that's the only way they know. To make us being afraid. Right. And but we are not afraid. But it's all part of control. And, and yes. this is what I'm saying. It's all part of, not that we shouldn't examine it or examine the science and also look at uh, whether it's true or not. But what we need to know, it's a smoke screen. It isn't what's really happening. If you want to know what's really happening, then you need to look at the smart device in 15 minutes. It is cameras, surveillance, the con government control, the world economy, all these different things. Uh, that are, And the construction in Israel, it's very interesting that there's so much construction going on. Uh, you think, well, <clears throat> that's good, you know, that Natalie, that would be a good thing to have construction, that the Israelis will have uh, places to live. Is it for Israelis? You know, you're, you're very right, because I I went to one place, like I was, cro I, I go always by one road to go to see our daughter, and loads of um, construction and all of that, and every time I felt bad, and I'm like, why do I feel bad now before I was feeling good? I was like, okay. And I spoke with you and I said, do you, how do you feel when you see this thing? And you say, I feel bad. And we're like, we couldn't understand why, but we knew. And every time I'm like, do I feel good? No, I don't feel good. What, why is it like that? And now we know that is again, a 15 minute city. 
and you can see everything will be there. You don't need to go anywhere. So it's like a ghetto. And Bernard, this is wonderful. You need to use your car, which is true. It's nice not to have to use your car. But it's like they are, is they are planning things. And again, is control. If you choose that, fine. But we are not controlling it. They, they are doing it. And now I know every time I pass, I say, well, okay, now they, I know what they are doing here. This is a 15 minute city. And, and this is not for our good. And it's a bit like we've told you as well about the electric vehicles, which are control, which can, uh, are controlled. Yes. And uh, suddenly you can get up in the morning and your car won't go anywhere because it's controlled right. externally. And uh, we talked about this on the last program. You'll have to watch the last one to see all the details about this. But I talked about the fact that you can control your electrical vehicle from your app on yeah. your mobile phone. Well, guess what? Other people can do and the government can do. They can tr yeah. control your vehicle through the app. So if you haven't paid your tax or whatever, suddenly you'll find your vehicle is either not starting or it's not even on the drive. It will have disappeared in the night. You're right. And what you were saying about the bank, Bank Apolim, which is one of the biggest bank here in Israel, I saw yesterday, that now you can't um, withdraw more than 3,000 shekels. Um, from from your bank account, from your money, you know they are controlling now our money. Is that like, excuse right. me? But the control. The, but the interesting thing is, uh, they're controlling cash. Yes. They're not so. I mean, they are controlling money as well. It's right, but they are particularly yeah, controlling does, yeah. cash. Yes. And uh, many people have written to us about difficulties with cash machines difficulties with uh, amounts that can be withdrawn, uh, difficulties banking cash into, you know, the, the placing of cash to put onto your bank account. Uh, the, there's all kinds of different issues and this is something else because with cash, obviously people are free. If they are, di if it's digital money, then it's trackable and traceable and controllable. And not only that, look, like there was the big COVID, so you have to take an appointment to go to the post office and to the bank. And is that stopped now, cancelled? No, it's all the same. So it's like they're controlling already. They don't want us in the bank. And even for the post office, it's like everything is controlled. You have to have an appointment. And so if, you, if you don't have an appointment, you can't get in. The door is yeah. actually, somebody's on the door yes. and uh, asking for your appointment. And if you don't have an appointment, you have to take you have to take one and by the way to get an appointment it's usually a week so if you have an emergency they can't obviously it can't wait that long and so you want to get in the bank straight away no you're not allowed even in in the door and by the way i thought the banks were working for us that they are actually doing a service for us and they are being paid by us they're actually charging us money for the service and yet they are not allowing us uh, to access our accounts. So this is this is where we are at and this is something happening in Israel. The yes. reason we say all of this is because if it's happening in Israel, then it's something you need to watch because Israel is first. Now, Natalie, you've got some things to yes, share with us today. Yes, I have, but I wanted also to add to what you are saying, like the bank is a service, but you know, the government is there to serve us. It's been organized for serving us. Now, this is interesting because I was listening, I don't know if I share that already, I was listening a, a program in, it was in Lebanon and you know, the government hasn't been on for a year and uh, they are doing, they are living, I know it's difficult, but they are living without a government. They are doing without a government, which is interesting. Anyway, now, yes, I have some very interesting things to say all the time, obviously, about the Bible, about Yerushalayim, about the Hebrew language. And today I wanted to share something with you about that there is some, so I call the sum of a sense, a sense, and is from the Psalm 120 to the Psalm 134. And so why, why are they called like that? Is because when you go to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you have to go up the mountain because it's high. It's about three, 
uh, eight, eight, well, maybe 700 um, meters in altitude. So usually when people come, they come up, they make the Aliyah into Yerushalayim. And God called the people of Israel to come three times in a year in Yerushalayim. And why? It's like an appointment. It's like a divine appointment. Why? Because he wants to put his name upon them. He wants to like uh, shine his face upon them. And it's like, it's like his presence come among them. And who doesn't want to be in the presence of the king? Now it's called the city of the great, the great king. And so they were, they were singing these songs. They were like very well known. And I think as believers, we have also to learn, you know, Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. I love to say Yerushalayim because it's plural. You have the Yerushalayim from above and you have the one Yerushalayim from down on earth and they are connected together. So when we go to Yerushalayim, we are coming to see the king. We are invited to come to see the king. Now, it was only for the Jewish people, but then Jesus, Yeshua said, I'm, the, I'm um, breaking down the wall of division, which was, it was a little wall, was um, all around the temple, because there was a place where the Goim, the Gentiles, could go, and then it was only the Jewish people who could go there. And Jesus himself said, I'm breaking this wall of division, not for the Jewish people to get out of my presence of the temple, but I want the Goim also to be able to come in. Okay, my family is bigger than like I've got something, God did something with the Jewish people and he said, now I want to add more to my family. So Yeshua said, I'm breaking this wall of division. And he said in Isaiah 2 that the Goim will come and come in Yerushalayim and the Torah will be taught. So, you know, when we hear about all that happening with the World Economic Forum and all of that, but now us, we want to get prepared. We want to prepare ourselves for the coming of the great king and the true king, because there is one who will come who will say, I am the true king, but he's not. And this is the Antichrist. Because Why? Because he wants this place. Satan always wanted to have this place, to be glorified. And, you know, when Yeshua... Uh, was on earth, what did he have to do? He had to fight Satan. You know, he was saying, you come here and I will give you everything. And, and Yeshua said, no, I don't want that. I worship only God. Yud Hey Vav Hey Yehovah. Okay. So in Psalm 125, I was just going to read the, the verse because it's beautiful. It's like, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Just which is behind us there, which cannot move, but abides forever. And there is a lot of places we haven't really taught, we haven't been taught that, but you see like King Solomon, and, and he, I mean, even like Moses said, there is a place that God is going to prepare. And then we know is Yerushalayim, and Solomon is there, and I say, whoever, Pray towards this place, I will hear his voice. Okay, so us as believers now, when we pray, we should turn towards Yerushalayim. We should turn toward, if you are far away from Israel, you have to turn towards Israel. If you are close to Yerushala, to Israel, you turn towards Yerushalayim. If you are in Yerushalayim, you turn towards the temple, the mount, of God. This is his place that he called Mount Zion and interesting is also called Mount Moriah and which is coming from when you are you have a teacher is Mora is the lady and More is the man. So this is the place where we will be taught. It comes all from there and I think it's beautiful. So I just encourage you that when you pray which is like Daniel you know, when Daniel was far away in Babylon and suddenly something happened and he said, now I have to go to pray. 
and he prayed three times a day and he was going into his home and he prayed towards Yerushalayim. This is in Daniel 6, 11, you can see it. And we need to be like Daniel. We pray towards Yerushalayim because every goodness, every kindness, every loving kindness, the chesed of God comes from that place. It flow from that place when his river of life will come, and there is prophecy also in Ezekiel about that, we will have peace, we will have shalom. And we need to prepare ourselves and look towards Yerushalayim. And together, we have to ask him, we want you now, we want the king to come back, we want the king to come and be established on the earth. And we want the true king which is Yeshua, which is the, the Messiah, the one who has been chosen by God from eternity. And what is said here, he will abide forever. Now, I'm going to read it in Hebrew, in Hebrew because again, it's beautiful. It's like, Abotrim, so he's the one who believes, trust, by Yehovah. So again, when they don't use the name Elohim, there is two names in in Hebrew is Elohim or Yehovah. And when you use Elohim, is the God of justice. When you use yud He vav uh, which also said Adonai, this is the God of compassion, of loving kindness, okay? Ke kart siyon, he is like Mount Sion. I, I love the Hebrew, it's like so straightforward. Lo yimot, they won't be moved. Le olam yeshev. Le olam forever uh, yeshev. They will sit. They will abide. And this is what's happening. So we need to look towards Yerushalayim every time that you pray, wherever you are, all around the world. Turn towards Yerushalayim. This is for us, it's over there. And we pray and God hear a voice. And the thing is that we are, all the things that are happening in the world are preparing us, they are getting us ready uh, for his return. So even though it might seem dark and it might seem like there's some terrible things happening, which there is, we're seeing that uh, this is preparation for his return. So it's a kind of a, a, a melting pot where all the things that are there making us ready. You know, it's interesting because there's a, script, a scripture that says all things work together for good. And it's like that. It's like, even though it's some terrible things, they are working together for his return. And uh, <clears throat> you have to kind of differentiate Israel and what's happening because uh, Israel is not the government. It's the, the Holy Land. It's the place where Yeshua came, it's the place of the prophets, it's where Abraham and the sacrifice, uh, uh, where he took his son Isaac, and uh, it's where everything, uh, where the temple was. So all these things, this is the Holy Land. However, there are things happening here and in the world which we need to be aware of because they are preparing us and the mainstream media are not telling us they're giving us a smoke screen, as I said at the beginning of the program, with different things. And you have to, you know, almost avoid it. If, if you're not sure, then avoid it. We, I have to go through it because it's part of our work in journalism. But if you don't need to, then don't look at it. But there are some things that are happening which are pointing towards this wonderful day of the Lord. Now... A lot of people will uh, say to us, say Natalie, well, how do we know? Because, you know, he's, we've been expecting his coming and there have been many uh, groups, uh, church groups, Christian groups through the centuries who've said he's coming now and he's coming here. How do we know that this is, this is the final stage? Well, there are so many signs in the earth. Uh, one of the signs, and I, I haven't got the full story with me, it's just come out. Uh, yesterday, before we got into the studio today, was the uh, announcement from the Weizmann Institute in Israel, 
which is important for you to know about. The first time they've been able to make a, a, a human embryo from uh, stem cells. Without, without sperm, without ovary. In a, so it's, a, it's, it's an, em, an embryo made in the laboratory, a human embryo. And this is really uh, something against God. It's against the creation, against everything that God stands for. And uh, we are seeing these things in our time. These are things which it can't go on. It's a bit like when you looked at the days uh, uh, of Sodom and Gomorrah, you might have thought, well, this will just go on forever. But there is a time limit. And the angels came uh, to uh, Sodom and they saw Lot and what was happening. And th the next day it was destroyed. So we are, we are on a time frame because of what's happening in the earth because of the alteration of genes, the alteration of humans, the cre creation of humans in laboratories un unheard uh, of before, M monstrous really, no, no. creating monsters. But this is good what you are saying. It's like, again, when Ab Abraham prayed. Okay, so when we have this news, I feel like we need to speak to God, say, look, can you see what's happening now? He needs to hear our cry. And in, in many stories, he comes down because he hears the cries of the people, which is the same for redemption when they were in Egypt. He heard the cry, he heard the distress. And I think we need to speak, we need to say to God, we need to keep so close in relationship with him and say, look, this is what we heard. And this is not on, Lord, you know, till when? And please hear our cry. Hear our cry now. Yeah, and so this is all these things are happening across the world. Now, we'd lo love to hear from you. Please contact us uh, and let us know what's happening where you are. Uh, because, you know, it's we, we need to work together when we can. We really don't know how long we have a voice. You know, there's an interesting scripture which says darkness, darkness is coming when no one can work. And there is it is like that in the season that we're in, that it is being there's a reduction in the amount of work we can do. It's just the season that we're in. And we seem to be coming towards that season where it says darkness is coming where no one can work. And it will not be possible uh, to get the news out. So we do this. We're doing it for you. We love to come into your homes and bring you the news. But we don't know how long that will be for. Uh, and we will do it as long as we can. You know, it's it's a miracle every time uh, that we can come by a television into homes and tell you what's happening in Israel and the world. And, uh, you know, it's it's a privilege really, Natalie, to be with, mm -hmm. with our friends. Thank you so much for your support. It really does make a huge difference. And I apologise again that we haven't been able to contact many of you who have been making donations. And that's because we are having banking difficulties. Not really connected in one way to what's happening and maybe connected, we don't know. But it's all part of, the, of what we're going through. And many of you are going through similar things. Um, we've got a lot of information on the website. We do a, a news story each day you can subscribe to that on our Substack account, also on the website. And Natalie's doing a, an update each week and you can subscribe to that as well. Go to our contact page and there's a button you can click. You can also support us, there's a donate button. And uh, we really do appreciate your support. We need your support. Uh, if, if you want to see us every week, we, we need to have the support uh, to be able to continue the work and uh, so that's very very needed and you can um, uh, uh, contact us if you need help with making a donation we try and make it as easy as we can and remember with a program that looks at the land the people and the language